Hey, this is Bill, and this is my Phantom X1, and today I'm going to talk to you a little about uh, my pre-flight procedures, and I want to start by saying I'm, I don't think I'm perfect. I'm not an expert. It's my hope that you will put in the comments things that I might be missing. You know, uh, hey, Brock, uh, you, you might better check this in the future, but I'm going to show you all the things that I checked and share with you a few of my uh, thoughts on ultralights. Uh, one thing you'll notice, I'm in an enclosed hangar. Uh, an ultralight, anything with Dacron cloth and an exposed engine like this, it really needs to be sheltered inside an enclosed hangar. Uh, it will not stand up to the elements, uh, not just the rain, the sun on the, on the Sacron, on the Dacron, it'll only last a year. But uh, I keep mine covered inside, that's mainly just to keep the dust off of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, uncover it. One thing I believe in having is plug for the exhaust and your pin for your parachute. And a cap over your pedo tube. That will keep the bugs out. Okay, the next thing I'll say about a pre-flight inspection is always use a written checklist. Don't rely on your memory. And always go into it with the proper attitude. Uh, I live 45 minutes away, and when I get here, I want to fly. And uh, realize that flying is not a foregone conclusion. You want to catch anything that could impede the safety of your aircraft before you take it in the air. I know some guys that bribe themselves. They have $100 set aside, and if they are able to gig their plane, they give themselves $100, or they take themselves out to dinner, whatever. Anyway, last time I caught two things that I was not happy with, and I grounded the plane. Real quick fix, and I'll show you what those were. Um, but the next thing that I normally do is go ahead and mix up the gas. Okay, you do not want to leave your gas uh, mixed up for long periods of time in your aircraft. Ideally, you mix it up right before you fly. Uh, I'm not flying today, so I'm not going to actually mix up the gas, but I'll show you my procedure. I have a five-gallon uh, can. Um, I use one of these Walmart uh, ratio guides. It makes it very easy to get the 50 to 1. I just buy the gas, however much gas I needed. Uh, I fill up the oil to that level, plus a pinch more to account for what stays in the container. I pour it into the... Uh, gas can very carefully and then put the cap on and vigorously shake it and I'll let it sit for a while while I uh, pre-flight the airplane. Now a hot topic is always what kind of oil to use and you're watching so you want my opinion so I'll tell you. Uh, I use the Pennzoil uh, multi-purpose oil. Um, if I don't have that then I use the Haviland oil and both of these meet the TCW3 standard, um, but here's my two cents worth. There's only three refineries that even make mineral-based two-stroke oil. Now, if you want to use uh, synthetic oil, that's, that's fine. Uh, in a car, I believe in synthetic oil because the oil is staying in the car. Uh, in a two-stroke engine, the oil is staying there for a fraction of a second and it's doing its job so I don't see the point of paying for the, uh, um, the premium uh, synthetic oil. Now uh, there's lots of other brands but basically what they're doing they buy the same oil in 55 gallon drums and they put it in their own package their own label maybe they add their own proprietary ingredients maybe they don't but uh, I prefer the Pens oil because you can get it at the local Walmart for less than $19 per gallon and it's cheaper to buy it by the gallon than by the quart. And um, I've got 400 hours on this engine. It has been rebuilt twice, but that was not because of oil issues. Everyone that rebuilt it said, yeah, that looks good. But it was it was the fault of the previous builder doing things incorrectly. One, it had the wrong crank. It had the snowmobile crank in it, so that caused a whole rebuild. And then someone else put the wrong size pistons in it, so it's kind of hard to get somebody to rebuild the engine correctly. But right now, uh, this engine's got uh, about 100 hours on it since the last rebuild, and I've had no problems. I've never had an oil-related problem with these two oils. I've got over a thousand hours in uh, two-stroke engines, and uh, knock on wood, I've never had to put it down because the engine quit 
due to something caused by oil. All right, so let's get to the actual inspection of the aircraft. Thoroughly shaking up the fuel, I transfer the fuel into the tank using a jiggler like this. Just put it in, put it in the tank, and then you shake it up and down and the fuel starts to flow. Uh, normally it's finished transferring six gallons into the tank before I finish the pre-flight. Now, this is one item that failed my last inspection. The first thing I check is uh, the fuel cap. And what I'm looking for is to make sure that it's soft and pliable. And one thing that I noticed, if you can see this, I saw cracks. And when I pulled back, it flaked off. Any little flake like that that gets in your engine is in, in the carburetor is enough to stop it. Um, so I immediately uh, put the, I have a temporary one that I use. Another fix is you can put a piece of a, uh, one of those nitrile gloves. You can make like a little cap condom and put it between there and that'll keep anything flaking off from going into your fuel. Uh, but these things, I use non-ethanol fuel in my plane uh, but still, these rubber gaskets only last like four years before they start uh, coming apart and then you have to order a new one. So that's the first thing I check. The next thing I check is this valve here. This is a one-way valve. It allows it to suck air into the tank as fuel is used. Uh, if it does not do that, it will create a, a vacuum in the tank and that will stop the plane from flying. So what I will do is blow into the hose he blows into the hose and then I, then I have to suck on the hose and the idea is that it should go into the tank but not out because if I go inverted or whatever splashing around I don't want the fuel uh, splashing out of the tank but I do want the air to get back into the tank. The next item that I would check, you can't see it here but my fuel uh, filter is right underneath. Let me give you my two cents on fuel filters. I had the expensive $20 one that uh, came from Aircraft Spruce and it sucked air into it and I started looking online and a lot of people have had problems with those. I use just the cheap one that I get from the local motorcycle shop and I change it every two years uh, along with the fuel lines. These uh, fuel lines should be, when you get them, they're nice bright blue. This is starting to turn green. You definitely want to change them before they turn yellow. These are nice and soft. Uh, they're good to go, but uh, if they start feeling hard, uh, then it's time to get rid of these fuel lines. Some people will use the cheap uh, fuel lines from AutoZone. I don't believe in that. I like the actual stuff, this uh, urethane from Aircraft Spruce, because if I do get bubbles in my system, I can see them here. Next step, I always have a rag with me while I inspect. I just drag it along the leading edge of the propeller, feeling for any nicks, and you just kind of wipe off the bugs. I checked the back of the propeller. These bolts, uh, this, this flange is threaded, but I have nuts on the other side. And these nuts really function more as lock nuts here. And I make sure that they're all flush, the top of the threads flush with the nut. Now, one thing that you're gonna see a lot of in my plane is this green. Let me show you what that green is. This is a product called Viz Torque. You can get it in any color you want from Amazon. And the idea is you paint it onto a thread like this across the bolt and the thread. And if the nut uh, backs off, it will break this thread. It dries to a hard kind of plastic. And uh, if it moves, you'll be able to tell. First, you want to, of course, tighten the bolt to make sure it's at your correct torque specification. Most of these bolts are only supposed to be hand tied anyway, but this gives you vision. It just makes the uh, uh, pre-flight inspection much faster if you have that. Again, that's called this torque, and we'll be seeing a lot of it as we inspect the plane. The next thing I do is check the spark plugs to make sure I, that they're seated. I just push down on them to make sure they're firmly in there. I have the two zip tied together just to eliminate some of the uh, vibration. Check that the engine rotates smoothly and I put the propeller in the vertical position so that I don't run into it as I do the rest of my checks. This is a free air engine, so the next thing I do is, you'll see I, I like to grab stuff and shake on it. 
I just check that the scoop is on thoroughly. If you still have the fan, this is when I would reach in and check the tension on that belt. Okay, next I'll make sure that these uh, U-joints are not locked up. Every 50 hours you need to put high temperature grease in here. The reason for that is if this, if, if it doesn't, if it's not allowed to move like that just did and like this just did, if it doesn't move, then all that vibration has to come somewhere. And what it did on my plane is caused a crack right here. Fortunately, a buddy of mine welded it up for me. I haven't had any problems since then, but uh, I learned every 50 hours to put fresh grease in there. I check these EGT probes, make sure that they're in there securely. Uh, I look for any leakage around the uh, around these exhaust manifolds to see that they're that they're tight enough. Viz torque, viz torque, viz torque, viz torque, viz torque, viz torque. All of these bolts, I'm making sure that they're where they need to be as all of the bolts on my uh, gearbox. Uh, I also look for any leakage of the uh, gear oil coming out of the top, any gear oil coming out the back here, any wet spots on the engine I'm looking for at this point. I check the this torque on the, uh, these bolts, this bolt, and the top of the uh, cane post. Now the cane post, you're supposed to check it for cracks, it's kind of hard to climb up on there. Uh, but you eyeball as best you can looking for cracks, making sure that your uh, flying, your ground wires and your flying wires are the proper tension. Okay? Next, I check the viz torque on the front wheel. And I make sure that the, uh, that the, temp that the pressure in the tires is correct. Okay? Now, here's something Phantom owners especially need to be aware of. It's a good idea to grab the plane, put the foot here, and push up and down and see if you can get any play in there. Uh, there's a bolt that connects this nose strut to the frame of the aircraft, and it can uh, get bent, and it can wallow out the hole in this uh, nose strut. That's how I found that one, was just by holding the plane like this and jerking back and forth on it to see if I could get any play in there. Next, I check these rubber boots. I do that by grabbing the filter and pulling the carburetor around. You're, that way, it'll make it really obvious if you have any uh, cracks in here. You can look at it from both sides, check both of the carburetors. Look for any wetness around there where it could be leaking out. Look for any moisture or oil leakage around here. Uh, that would indicate that your uh, cylinder head is not properly torqued down. It's almost impossible to have a completely dry two-stroke engine. That's one reason I'm not a big fan of two-strokes. But I like to grab the ignition and make sure it's on there solid. Grab the fuel pump, make sure it's not going anywhere. Uh, all the parts that are attached, I'll make sure they're not going anywhere. Check that the uh, throttle cables are clear, not binding. And check the exhaust securely fastened. I check the viz torque inside. The viz torque up there on the structure bolts holding the uh, frame together. And at this point, I usually zero out my altimeter. Make sure that the uh, ailerons move smoothly and the elevator moves smoothly. Next, I check the condition of the bungee cords. Make sure that they're not cut or frayed. Make sure that the vis torque, all of these structural bolts are secure. Uh, check that the throttle moves freely. And check that the trim tab moves freely. Now, next step is to check these wires. The manual recommends just taking a cloth and dragging at the links and what that's going to do is check for uh, any uh, fraying or broken strands but what's most important is to check these thimbles and make sure that they are not elongated. I will give you a picture of what an elongated thimble looks like 
but uh, you want to check those and make sure that the thimbles are in good condition. After I check the top uh, ground wires, I check the condition of the wing. We're looking for any holes or any of these ribs that are bent in. All the ribs should be uniform in, uh, in their curvature. Make sure that your bolts are all uh, tight. Make sure that you can see threads on all of your hinge bolts. Also check that these, all of these plastic uh, spacers are in good condition. Make sure that the ailerons are connected uh, properly and your turn buckle. Okay. Yeah, I get kind of low on occasion. You want to check that there's no leakage of your brake fluid. Look for leaks in here. Uh, make sure that your um, cotter pin is holding your wheel on. Looking for just any general cracks, anything that doesn't look right at this point as we move to the tail of the aircraft. There's our Visitorque. Uh, I check the security of the parachute, make sure that it's uh, still mounted solidly on there. And we come to the back. Check the for broken strands on uh, these wires exactly as we did the other ones. Check the uh, condition of your fabric. Check your hinges, make sure you can see threads on all of your uh, nuts that are holding the uh, hinge bolts on check that the rudder is connected properly and I like to give it a firm shake here's something you want to pay attention to I've heard of crashes from the uh, trim tab coming off so I always grab that and make sure it's firmly uh, connected check the rest of the wires just like you did the other ones now we're coming up on another area that my aircraft failed, and that is here. This uh, rib has worn a hole in my fabric. Now, last time I flew, it looked like this. I was just able to start noticing that uh, it's starting to wear. But at this point, I wanna go ahead and fix this. Um, so that it does not grow any further. Now, when you buy sales, they should send, give you some of the scraps left over. I'm about to cut a piece of uh, material just larger than this circular, and you want to use gel super glue to uh, apply it. I used uh, Loctite gel control super glue. It turned out to be a goofy mess. My uh, advice is a little bit goes a long way. Uh, I used a little bit too much. It was kind of hard to wipe it off. Uh, got a little bit of residue around it, but uh, the repair uh, will certainly hold. It's, uh, and what's more important is it's, the hole is not gonna grow any larger. One item that's on the list that I have not checked is the compression struts. Uh, reason is mine, my plane has one piece uh, compression struts, but I'll show you how to check it if yours does not. You just uh, unzip this area. And uh, up here is a great place to put stuff like sleeping bags and a change of clothes if you ever want to do an overnight trip or something like that. You have uh, lots of storage up here for light items. But anyway, there's your uh, compression strut right here. And uh, if you have the two piece, you really do want to uh, check that since mine is obviously a one piece unit. Uh, I don't bother with it. When you zip it up, make sure you put the tab inside so it doesn't flop around. Makes it a little harder to open the next time, but you don't want that zipper flopping about. Uh, you also want to check that your in the uh, pod that your seat belts are in good condition, not uh, cut or torn in any way. Uh, my mine are obviously brand new. 
Um, they advise you to check the pod for any cracks. Um, mine has this hairline cracking right here from vibration. I haven't bothered with, uh, with fixing that. <clears throat> One thing that happens <coughs> on my plane, no matter how hard I try, I end up with these cracks from fuel dripping on my windshield. Uh, I need to be more careful and make something to cover the windshield up because what will happen is, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, you can have fuel drip out or just uh, oil that collects in that uh, and the air filters drip onto the windshield and that Lexan is going to craze. And that's my pre-flight on the airplane, pretty basic. Um, like I said, if there's anything you want to add, I'll mention my spark plug caps. You might have noticed they're black and the actual recommended part is brown. Uh, the reason for that, it's still an NGK cap and it's the correct specifications. It's just I had a lot of communication problems and the radio seems to like the black caps better than the brown ones. If you have any explanation for that, please put it in the comments. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Also, these NGK plugs I can buy at the local um, motorcycle shop for two or three dollars each compared to the brown ones come from uh, Lockwood Aviation for like $27 each, some crazy price. Um, but anyway, if you know <coughs> The difference between the brown ones and the black ones let me know in the comments if there's anything i missed in my pre-flight let me know that's why i'm putting this video out there thanks so much for watching